Um, so it's just a great medium to work with. And it actually started, I forgot to say this earlier, um, kind of like photography, it was used more so in, in a professional sense, um, you know, to get the word out, whether it's in the newspaper. And then as artists kind of claimed it and started to make editions of it, it kind of then became an art form. So. Um, I included a couple of videos. I don't know if you guys want to see those right now. These two, this one kind of goes through the whole process. This one I included for those of you who might be interested in trying to print at home. I know I talked to Eva about that when I was setting this up that we will, we're going to have a drop off, I believe, and I'll print out a couple of things for you guys, but there's also a way that you guys can easily print from home if you want to try that. So I included this video for that. Um, I can maybe print, play this one if you guys want to see it, or if I don't know if you want to go into the actual like making an image. Anybody have an opinion on that? No. <laughs> okay. I'd like to make the image, but. <laughs> Okay, so I'm, again, we can share this PowerPoint. So it has a link to these couple YouTube videos that I just thought were interesting. Um, and again, just go through like beginners, um, very simple ways of, of inking up and printing something at home. Um, but I will show you, for those of you who couldn't make it to campus, um, we have a website actually for the steamroller printmaking um, exhibit. So if you guys wanted to take a look at that as well, um, all the images are here. If you click on any of these, um, let's go to Trevor's. <laughs> um, it'll give you all the information with the artist's name, the title, their statement, bio. Um, so you can kind of go back and forth and go through those and, and get the different um, kind of information on each piece. We also had some students that participated in this too. So this was their each of them did one block and we put them together. Um, so you can see what some of our students made as well. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the PowerPoint that I put together for you guys. Um, I also had some examples of just stuff that I've done in the past and then we can get into kind of my steps of how I put a, a block together. There's so many different ways of doing this though. Um, so we can kind of go over a few things like that and some safety things and just different things for carving. Um, so where's my mouse? I can stop sharing that so I can see more people. <laughs> um, okay, where is my other camera? Oh no, is it light enough? Now I have a weird shadow that was not here when I tested this earlier. Sorry guys, technical. I can, I can pretty much see. Okay. Yeah, um, but when, I pin, right here, so it's... when I pin the video. Um, okay, so how do I wanna do this? Let's start. I'll show you guys some of the, like the different things that I've done in the past. Um, two, so you guys can see like the actual paper prints. This was one of the first kind of carvings that I did. I'm just going to pick up my phone because it's not the right orientation here. Um, so this is a really fun one. Like I said, um, when you start carving, don't automatically outline everything. So if you get in here, um, the assignment was to try to do as many different marks as you possibly could. So when you start looking at an image or whatever design it is that you're working with, you wanna think of how you can create the textures that you're seeing and create different patterns. Um, I did do some outlining on these leaves here, but you would not want to necessarily do that for the entire image. Um, you just lose that kind of beautiful quality of um, 
of the print, right? So you want to create those textures and like I kind of lost it right in here and I actually did outline. I wish I wouldn't have done that. And I would have done some more like leaves to kind of create, sorry, I'm all shaky. Um, but yeah, I just love how this turned out with all the different textures and stuff like that. Um, you guys stop me and ask any questions, please. Okay. And again, I'm not, it's harder for me to see the chat. So don't be shy to ask through the camera Jenny? if you can. Yeah. Hi, Jenny, it's Ruth. I have a Hi, question. Um, I have the line no cutter set. So mm -hmm. how do we know which tool to use for the different textures that you like displayed on that one print make thing that you just showed now? So I, I do have that image on um, the PowerPoint, which let me just, sorry, let me bring that up again. Sorry for the jumping back and forth, whoever is doing the pinning of um, cameras. So so you can see down here, um, the main thing is that they, each of them makes a bigger gouge as you go up in size. Um, I always have a really bad habit because I, always in all my art I always want control of what I'm doing so a lot of times I get stuck using this itty bitty um blade to carve everything but you really do once you start kind of branching out into using the different tools in different areas it really does create like a lot more texture and just uh, gives it more richness so I try to I try to push myself to use all the different ones um the best way really to see all the different marks is like this um, again, I think we only were able to give you one piece of linoleum. Um, but you can see here even too that the different ways that you can cut the linoleum. If you were able to get an extra piece, I know some people bought their materials, I think. Um, you could totally use an extra piece just to practice making marks. You can also honestly um, just cut down your block and just cut like a little like skinny piece off and just have a little bit more square if you don't have a design yet and use that to, to do something like this and just test out different marks to be made. Um, but it really just does come with starting to carve and just getting used to it. Does that make sense, Ruth? Answer your question. Yeah, that helps looking at that one slide where it shows you like the, the, the last one. Yeah, because that I noticed like when I'm looking at the different blades that the bigger tool is more like for the deeper cuts, I guess. Yeah, you usually want to use that if you have like bigger space to like, and again, I don't know if you can see my um, one that's pointed down at my table, but like for the sky, I'm just going to carve away um, and leave whatever texture is left. Um, I would use the bigger gouge there. Whereas some of this in like my little dandelion puff, I'd probably use the, the smaller gouge. So again, it's it does come with just getting jumping in and using them, and you'll start to see kind of how each one kind of acts when you're when you're carving. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Uh-huh. And can I can I ask? I, th I think yeah. you said what you carve out will be like the white space, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let me find one that's not as inked up. So here's one of my old plates. Um, and I've inked it. So now it's kind of the opposite. But basically all these like darker areas, that's where I... Um, that's where I carved away. So that would be before I inked it up and printed it. Those were all kind of the lighter colors. Maybe this is a better. So it looked more like that, where the marks I made are what, basically what's gonna be white. So um, does that make sense? <laughs> I think so. The, so you like, you like put ink this. on it first to see where you had carved away, right? 
on these. Uh, that's something I like to do is I put Sharpie down because the way my brain works, if I don't, I'll end up carving something I don't want to. Um, but again, that's just something that I got used to doing because I want to see what it is that I am I'm carving away. Mm -hmm. um, so where is it? So that's basically the, the positive negative, right? So the, on the block, again, that's the dark where the face is. That's what I carved away. So it technically would be lighter if it wasn't inked yet. So then when you print it, that's what's white. So what you carve away is going to be white. What you leave behind is going to be your darks or where your ink is going to be. Okay. And you have another question. This is Ruth again. So it mm -hmm. looks like you carved opposite. It's like a mirror effect, right? Because when you stamp yes. it. Yep. I was oh, going to wow. get to that. Okay. <laughs> um, so I, and I was going to use this one actually as my kind of example um, of my different steps that I make and everything just fell, of course. Um, so I always start with my sketch with the drawing um, in my sketchbook usually. And um, either I car I, I'll trace out the size of my block or I'll do my sketch to scale and then I, I'll blow it up on the computer and print it just depending on what, like when I was in school, we had, I had more access to better printers and stuff. So I would just print it. Um, now I usually just, just do it to the size that I'm, my block is. Um, and then I trace it. Sorry guys, I don't have one of those fancy phone holders. So I'm trying to make this work as best I can. So I would trace it and then um, trace my drawing and then you put it onto your plate. So this one would be this way. And then draw it again. And that will copy your pencil to your block. Does that make sense? I already went over my Sharpie, but on this one, that's what I did. Um, I traced it. And so all these lines were my drawing that I then it copied once I went over the back of it. So hard to see because these shadows. Hold on, let me close this window. Um, okay, so does that make sense? So I traced my drawing so it's the right way that I'm looking at it. What and then the paper you're using, I'm sorry. What is that sorry, paper? what? What is that paper you're using? This is just tracing paper. Um, another way if you don't have tracing paper is you can draw um, on just a piece of paper. And then in pencil, has to be in pencil, and then flip it over onto your block and then do like a rubbing and it should transfer some of the, the graphite and you might have to draw back in some lines might not come through, um, but it will give you a pretty good idea of where. And that, again, that's just the way that I always do it, but you can also just draw straight on your block if you don't wanna deal with tracing and, and transferring. Um, I just always do sketches first. And then when I get it to how I want it, I don't wanna have to like, I just wanna transfer. I don't have to redraw it. <laughs> So that's how I've just kind of created my process. Um, and it doesn't necessarily matter about the reverse so much if you don't have text, as long as you know that, you know, the person is going to end up on the other side. So some people don't care about orientation um, when they're drawing on their block. But if you do draw on your block, know that what you're looking at when you print it, whatever is on this, you know, this lamp, here, if you draw it, when you print it, it's gonna be on the opposite side. So some people think it looks weird once they're, they're done with it because it's not what they're expecting, but you can totally do it that way. The only time that you have to worry about the um, making sure that everything's in reverse is if you have text. So this, I did this little itty bitty block and it was a little market. So I had to make sure and carve my text um, backwards and flipped around 
so that when you print it, it's the right way. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so, what was I gonna do? I'll show you guys next. One last thing before I get to the piece that I'm gonna start doing some kind of carving on. Um, most of the things I've been showing you have been black and white, um, but I just wanted to show you guys too that you can print multiple times and, and build up color. Oops, no, I don't wanna do that, sorry. Um, so this one to create that um, green and blue, I before I carved, I printed an, like an ombre effect, kind of mixing the two colors together. And then I carved the block and printed my carving over it. So that's one way that you can get some color going if you try this at home. Um, and then this is way more complicated, <laughs> but I just wanted to show you guys. Um, this is a reduction color print. So I basically started with, um, this is all from one block. And I printed, see if I can even figure out which color I started with. Um, probably the yellows and the greens, like the lighter colors, and then the blues, and then I carved away, and then I did the light brown, and then I carved away and did the dark brown. So again, this is way more complicated and advanced, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys like there's so many different ways that you can just relief printing alone that you can create different different images. Um, okay, any other questions? Oh, here's another one that's a like kind of good example of different kind of like marks. Okay. So, trying to figure out ah sorry guys <laughs> okay it's just that's what it should do so again i started with my sketch and i just did something really simple basic right now um and then I did my tracing paper, or you could, like I said, just take this drawing and put it down on your block and do a rubbing of it to then transfer it. Oh, keep your mind, keep it upside down for me. So now it's in reverse. Okay, so you wanna get your design um, on your block in whatever way you want to do. So if you want to draw, if you have a drawing already, if you have like a photograph you kind of want to work off of, or just drawing straight on to your um, linoleum. Okay. So, then I'm gonna take, I'll kind of do a couple areas and show you guys way quicker so where is it can i get it to focus i don't think that's focusing very well but like in that image that i showed you guys you can kind of see on this side there's that that thicker dark area looks like kind of like a parentheses or like a crescent moon that is where which one do i want to start with which I did not open that enough. You want to slide your your blade in to that little like crescent moon. And if it gets stuck, you don't force it. That means it's not in the right spot. It needs to be in between that that little piece and the ball bearing that's in the middle. And if it's like if you only get it in like that far, it's also not in right. It should be able to nicely slide all the way down to that round part. 
that way you don't have any any problems when you start to carve it won't like slip out or anything like that okay you want to see that again or have any questions on getting your blades in your tool yeah how did you put it in again okay i'm going to bring up that powerpoint again because I feel like it doesn't focus very well. So right here, there's this little piece of like a metal disc that's kind of detached from the rest of this. And then there's this ball bearing. So when you loosen up, you, you twist and untighten the like gripper part that will open up the space in between the ball bearing and that plate. And then you should be able to slide your blade in, which is like a little, um, again, like I think like a little crescent moon or something, a little curved piece of metal. It should slide in nicely into that gap. If you put it on the wrong side, usually that's when it gets stuck and it won't go in all the way. Or if you put it um, behind on the outside of that little sheet of metal that's in there that's when you, it won't slide in all the way. You have to get it in between those two pieces. Hello? Does that make sense? Sorry, I can't see what you're doing. Okay, sorry, I was looking at the PowerPoint. Is that, am I still pinned on the other one that you can't see the, I have two windows. Because again, I couldn't get my, the tool itself to focus on my camera on my phone. Oh, so we're putting on the, um can you see the PowerPoint right now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this little opening right here, you can see this little like parenthesis of metal here that's detached from everything else. So when you untighten this bigger piece, like you unscrew it, um, it should become loose enough that you can slide your blade, the back of your blade into that gap right here. And if you get it on this outside of this, so closer to the bigger piece of metal, it probably won't go in all the way like it needs to. And if you, some people put it, where'd my mouse just go? Some people try putting it even on this side and that's not right either. It won't slide in properly. So you want, it needs to be nicely tucked away in, in between these two pieces of metal. And then you tighten the, the outside part again, you tighten as tight as, as tight as you can, and that will hold your blade in place. Does that make sense now? Got it. Okay. Um, okay, let's stop this again. So now I'm back on my phone. I keep doing that for you guys to be upside, right side up. It needs to be upside down for me. Um, so when you go to carve, one of the biggest things, and I am horrible at this, I have cut myself a million times because I get so focused on what I'm doing that I don't pay attention to where my hands are. Um, usually you, you probably want to end up like trying to hold it down and just start carving. You never want to carve, even if you're like you're over here, you never want to carve anywhere towards your hand because you probably will slip. It, it's just part of printmaking. You're never gonna get, you know, a completely clean cut all the way through. Um, so, like I said, I I try to be good about always keeping my hand behind where I'm working, working away from. That way, you don't cut yourself. But I've done it a million times. You just, like I said, you just get focused on what you're doing and you're moving it around, and then all of a sudden you slip and your hand's right there. So just try your best to pay attention to what you're doing and and really try to keep your hand behind where you're working um, as you carve. There's there's tools that you can get to, or you can set up like a stack of books that you don't care about against like your, the back of your desk or like against the wall that will kind of hold it in place. Um, there's like a bench hook or like an L hook that you can get that will attach to your desk too. Um, but with these smaller plates, you should be, I think it's pretty easy just to, again, just make sure your hand's back here and to carve away from your body. Okay. So I'll kind of make a couple marks. So does anyone have any other questions before I start kind of carving away? 
at this? Anything about, do you have you guys thought at all? I, I don't know what was, if anyone has already had a drawing in mind or do you guys have any questions about like what to kind of carve? Do you need a theme, Ellen? Yeah. I was just gonna maybe suggest, well, what I'm gonna do is, um, cause I didn't, you know, make a drawing is just kind of practice with different, um, different hash or mar different markings and different, um, you know, with the different tools, uh, with the different blades and stuff, just, just to kind of get, make patterns and get used to holding the tool. Cause it's like really foreign to me to hold it in the first place. So I can't mm -hmm. even think about it. I can't even think at this point of a drawing. So, um, I'm just going to be making patterns or kind of just yeah. to kind of get used, used to utilizing it. Yeah. You guys can go totally like abstract designs, like just make lines. Like I can totally see something if you just like kind of draw lines and then just do different textures just to kind of get a feel for it and make something cool. Um, I just did this little drawing. You guys can do something simple like the students did. Um, we gave them, what was it, Trevor? It was like a symbol that symbolized like their, what their culture or their identity was to them. Um, so whether it was something to do with their family, with where they were from, or just something that they are into, I think kind of what it was. Um, and I can bring those up again too, if you guys wanna see what the students came up with. Um, so you can keep it really, really simple. I tried to keep it as simple as I could, <laughs> um, but still working with something that I kind of had already drawn. <laughs> so I didn't have to create a new thing because it's been crazy end of the semester. Um, so yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question. Uh-huh. Go for it. Arliss, you're muted if you're talking. Try to see if I have anything else simpler. You there, Arliss? I think yeah. you're unmuted now. What was your question? Yeah, on this on this one, on the the black spot that we see the black side of the dandelion is that what you have taken out or that's what's left no so that's that's just that was me starting to block out what i'm not going to carve so i was going to keep this like kind of city scape line uh -huh. dark and so that's where ink will be and then i'm going to carve out the sky and my dandelion i just okay. didn't get the, to carve because Again, for me, I would do the whole thing black just because I'm weird and I need to see it. You don't have to do that. If you know that's what you're going to keep black, you could just draw out this line and just draw not carve that. Okay. Yeah. So the other just part of the... Of yeah. Okay. So what is black right now is you've just made a Sharpie of it and said, stop here. <laughs> don't don't go into this Yeah. Area. Yeah. So... Oh, okay. So yeah, so now I'm, I'm not gonna carve any of this and I'll, I'll carve all of the sky in different, I'm gonna create different textures in the sky, but um, but yeah, that was me trying to keep it, like I said, a simple, kind of simple image. Well, I just, I just wonder, you, you know, but the black now mm -hmm. will be stained and, and you'll be carving out. That will get inked up. Cause basically what you're doing is you're carving away um, and creating like a little, like a, divot so then when you go to place your ink on top it's going to hit all the high points so all the low points that you carved away won't get, get inked up because they're lower than the high points so you, does that make sense you've got, you've got a large amount of sky to carve out yeah okay thank you but again i'll use that larger tool and it will go pretty quickly eva did you have a question and do you try to oh do sorry it in, i'm sorry do you try to do a the carving with the grain or against the grain like when you're doing this, style this now, yeah would you go from yeah this there's so there's no grain in the, the 
Yeah, there's no grain of linoleum, so you're totally free to do whatever. And I was going to kind of do some different um, different directions to kind of show you kind of what, okay. how it would, I just, I just because in a, in a big space like this too, in the sky, even though I'm going to carve away all of that, because it's such a big empty space, um, it's still, it's going to pick up some ink. Um, unless like there's different ways to block it out completely, like taping it before you ink or something like that. But, um, it's, that's just kind of part of printmaking is that even in areas that you carve, it kind of leaves behind. Um, let me see if I can find some direction. It's this one. Wondering. Yeah. So okay. like, I'm kind of guessing my sky will be something like this not as dark I'm, I'm thinking i'm gonna take out more than what i left on this but i'll have some type of marks and i think i'm gonna do them kind of more like rolly and not so harsh that was like a really cloudy moody print um it just looks like a big area and i just was wondering about the texture mm -hmm. of it. yeah so yeah. it does leave some when you leave a high point or a low point it will pick up speck yeah clouds or whatever yeah. okay yeah, unless you, there's another way to kind of avoid that is you can also leave a border around the edges. And that way, when you do your, your roller, because basically this is a teeny tiny one, but this is kind of all I had. Um, this is what you would ink up and you pick up ink here and then roll it out. Um, you try to get one that's as wide as your block usually. So if you had a border, that would kind of keep your, your roller above and not catch those low points you carved away in this in this area if that makes sense so that's one way to get away with that if you don't want any information and you have a really big sky area or something like that you can leave a border around the edge and that will help to kind of keep that area white eva i was wondering if you could kind of show us like which tool tips you used on some of your some of the ones you showed to kind of show like <laughs> I'm not really sure which tip to choose yeah. for the different textures that I want to do. So I'm gonna really try I'm I'm telling you like I am so bad I I use the skinniest one almost on the entire thing. Um I might have used like on some of these plants and next the, the v gouge that's the next one up and that's the other thing i'm sorry you guys so there's a v gouge there's two v gouge tools i'm trying to see where is it it won't focus there you can kind of see it so there's where it literally looks like the letter v and then the other two are, are u gouge so it's a little bit has kind of a flatter bottom part where is it um and it just looks more like a u or like a kind of like a squared off u um so these ones are really good for just getting again i'm so detailed i don't use these ones very often i'm trying to see if i have any like maybe in this sky up here like these bigger areas honestly i probably still use that itty bitty because like i said i have a problem and i just need the, I feel like I need the control, but this would be good to get around to just make it go faster, basically. Um, here, you can see this one for sure. I used a bigger, a bigger gouge there, and I do have this print, so I can show you what it looked like once I printed it. So this one definitely left a lot more white because it probably hit these two areas so you can see there's some some black that came through here but because i had here this high point and this high point anything i carved away here didn't get picked up so that's using probably that smaller u gouge is what i used on the sky here okay um, here's a great one of just like texture. Um, like even in one area, you can make little marks and some big marks. 
to give it like different texture and stuff too. Um, so yeah, again, if you haven't started yet, and if you don't mind cutting your block down a little bit, if you have a straight edge and a ruler and just wanna cut an end off like an inch or something and use that to kind of make some marks just to get a feel for it. If you don't wanna just start on your block, that's one way of doing it. Again, if anyone bought their materials and maybe has a second one, that's even better if you have a bigger butt. You can see here, I just took a teeny tiny extra piece that I had and I was making some type of like grass-like leafy thing. And I just tested out the different blades um, to see how they looked. So you don't need a whole lot to kind of see um, what the blades do. Okay. Um, Donnelly? Hi, sorry, I have to go in like a couple minutes. I was just wondering if you could just do a little bit of carving on your plate so we could see what it yeah. looks like when you do it. Yes. Okay, where do I wanna, let's do the bigger area. I'll, I'll not use my traditional little itty bitty first. So one thing, and this is something that, I, again, I wasn't the greatest at when I started, um, is that you don't, like I have my drawing, you don't necessarily, unless you want it to be really detailed, you don't want to like, you don't have to rather like outline everything, okay? Like that would be my go-to is I would want to like just block out with that skinny one, like draw a line with my blade first, but you don't have to do that. You can just make your marks up to your drawing. Um, and then when you start carving two, direction can matter, right? Because like I said, it, even though you're carving away like a big area, it still could possibly pick up what you carved. So um, for me, I'm going to want to carve my sky kind of going horizontally. I don't want to do it up and down just because to me, I feel like those horizontal lines, maybe it looks like clouds or something like that. Um, but maybe in a building, maybe you want to mix it up and you want to carve some up but then also carve some um, horizontally, right? So for me with the sky, I want to do, am I in the camera? Yes. I'm just gonna kind of start. And again, I already wanted to put my hand in front. And you don't need to go very deep either. The deeper you get, the harder it is to kind of control. Um, is it focused or is that just me? I'll carve a little bit and then I'll bring it in for you guys. Ooh, this linoleum is weird. So you can get like a nice long one. But if you saw when I start, you're not always going to get that. So you kind of want to just go with the flow if you're doing like bigger areas. Um, Cause even though I have these kind of like chunkier, let me bring it down here real quick. Oh, where'd it go? Like I have these like kind of chunkier that like kind of stop. If you keep carving away, it'll kind of blend in if that makes sense at all. So you can kind of fix that if you don't like how it goes, just how it, your first mark is, just keep kind of working on it. Okay. I'm trying to get oh come on you can turn it too you don't have to keep it the same direction especially with these smaller blocks Let's say I just want to do oof, 
And I got my hand in front. So you kind of make, can make your like areas look kind of wispy and like you can create these kind of lines and patterns in the way that you're carving. Sorry, I didn't realize that was not on camera. So I'm not gonna completely follow all of this. Like I might come up and, and kind of create my own pattern in the sky or whatever it is you're working on. Eva, is that a new question or did you have your hand up from last time? Okay. Um, some people, if, like I said, this, this little name is, I don't know if it's just, it's been that long that I don't remember, <laughs> but it's kind of tougher right now. Um, there are ways that you can kind of soften up. Like if you are working by a window, it's maybe a little bit, the sun is out. You kind of let set it down in your sun, in the sun, I mean, and it will kind of soften your block up a little bit and maybe make it a little bit easier to carve. Um, but because this is a little bit difficult, the one thing I would not do because I do want somewhat of a straight line is when I'm close to my dandelion stem here, I'm gonna carve away from it. That way, if my blade, I don't know if you were noticing my blade would kind of slip at times. If my blade slips, I'm at least carving away from this really thin line that I don't want to, cause you can, I, I have definitely been carving and my blade slips and I hit something off that I really wanted to keep. So if you can, if, if it's something that's important to you, I would try to carve away from it as best you can. Sometimes it's not possible. You might have to just go really slow, really carefully. But, okay, so I made a couple marks. Let me switch out to the different, the other big blade. I'll do the big V gouge. So you can see these the V gouge. This is the bigger one. So it makes a slightly bigger mark, but it's definitely much thinner. You see this one compared to the U gouge. The U gouge just gets rid of a lot more material way quicker. So you have something more detailed, you're gonna to wanna to use the V gouges. And you can mix it up too. So. Okay. So. I would just keep going with the sky. I might bring this up and have them meet. And just like, I don't know, think of something almost very Van Gogh and just like very loose. Kind of make, maybe make some swirls in the sky or something. Let me show you the little dandelion puff. Been playing with how I want to do this. I think that I just want to make little Okay, let me get you closer on this now so you can see using the much smaller V gouge, and I'm actually able to make these little, where is it focused? So these little itty bitty marks. Okay. And like kind of what I was thinking, I'm going to go around like the lines, I'm going to just try to keep them not going to outline them. I'm just going to try to make all those little marks around the line and hope that they kind of come through 
once I'm done. I feel like my camera is not very focused at all. Any other questions so far, you guys? Any ideas of what you're gonna make? Jenny, if we're trying to um, trace an image, you said that we can print like print out the image and then we trace it with the pencil and mm -hmm. then we press I guess it I did. once. I did skip that, didn't I? Sorry. So again, I did just like a quick sketch in my sketchbook. Where'd I put my... And then basically I, is it this way? And again, I have tracing paper. You could also just draw on paper so I'll show that one in a second. So if you were to have tracing paper or like a thinner paper that you could see through, um, I traced my, my sketch once I was done. And then you get your block. And because I want it to be in reverse, I flip it over. And then I basically just drew over my lines again because you have the pencil, the graphite on the, the front side, when you when you draw over it again, it'll transfer onto your linoleum. Okay. Okay. The other thing that you could do if you don't have tracing paper is make your, your sketch on a piece of paper, make sure your pencil marks are dark enough. And then this is my sketchbook, so it's a little more difficult, but then I would just place it on and then take your pencil again or like maybe a, a spoon and just do like a rubbing basically and that will also transfer your pencil onto your block okay thank so you if you don't know what you want to do maybe it's the best way is that you can then do a couple sketches and once you get what you like then transfer it so you don't have to redraw and not get it how you drew it the first time that's what i don't like to do um but you like i said you can also just draw straight on your block if you're going to do like an abstract design or something like that. You definitely don't have to make the sketch if you don't want to. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you, Jenny. Yeah. Can I add uh, that the pencil should be a soft lead pencil. Do not use the hard pencil because it won't uh, True. It, uh, it won't yeah. do what you're saying. You yeah. need a soft grass pencil. Which really any like number two, like I just have, I use a mechanical pencil. Um, if you don't have, like, there are, like, artist pencils that come in different softness, and the softer you get, the easier it'll transfer, but this is what I used, and it transferred perfectly. So you just don't want anything that's, like, really, really hard, like she said. It won't work, but if you have just, like, a, a basic number two pencil, that will, that should work. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Um, I also wanted, I don't, again, it's not focusing very well, but let me see if I can get this. So, especially with the smaller blade, but even these bigger ones, um, the other thing to keep in mind is the, where you start carving, you kind of have a direction. So this one, I think I was carving here. So it's a little bit what's the word like more blunt where I started and then where I ended you can see it's a finer point so keep that in mind too when you're when you're using your tools that the direction you're going is going to kind of give you a different mark um so like in these little in the puff that I'm doing like I'm having the skinnier part um going out so I want to make sure I'm carving in the same direction so I'm going to turn this as I go, keeping my blade in the same direction all the way around. Because it does make a difference in the, in the direction that you're carving. Stay. Mm 
anything else about, again, like making your image or anything like that? Or do you guys want to see anything else in the PowerPoint again? Or show if you guys, I don't know if anyone's carving right now. If you want to show what you have or, you know, making a sketch, if you want to share it. Oh, I didn't see that. Are you holding something up? Uh-oh, your blurry background. <laughs> I know, the whole thing's blurry. Hold on. <laughs> now you got to kind of like sit up so it picks you up and then. Oh, cool. Can you do three little birds? <laughs> yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That'll come out cool. You're doing you know how what you're, Kathy is right. doing it. I'm also doing my pet. Oh, Eva, that's, that's really cute. cute. I have not carved it yet. I'm just, I'm just drawing it the way that he tells us to. Nice. Anyone else want to share? Have any drawings going? Jenny, the um, to get more linoleum, it's easy mm -hmm. to get at the art store. Okay. Yeah, they and um, I was just at Artists and Craftsmen, and they had some. Mm -hmm. um, Blick, you can order, order it and have it delivered. I think it took about a week for us when we ordered in bulk. Look at Trevor! Oh my gosh, you're making more of them. So cool. So you can you guys see all the marks that he made in the direction that he's he's kind of using the direction of the blade to create the form of the tree. You guys see that how it kind of it curves. And then where the eyes are, he switched the direction. That's so awesome. I still just love those Trevor just like as pieces themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so is that linoleum black or is this a print or why is it black oh i used um uh i'm kind of freehanding these but i'm using a, a piece of plywood um oh. and then mm -hmm. i spray paint the plywood black so that i can see the marks that i'm making and then i just use a, a pencil to kind of loosely lay out where i want um, you can kind of see over here where there's going to be another one. And mm -hmm. so I just loosely lay out where my forms are going to be. I put a few lines in to give me a direction of my contours, uh, my contour lines that I'm going to be doing. And, um, and then I just kind of organically freehand it. Yeah. Do you, do you use different tools with wood? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to show you. I'm guys. using a, a woodworking gouge. It's essentially uh -huh. the exact same thing as this, but it's just um, better. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, it's, just more it's of a stronger, I mean, better metal. Yeah, yeah, it's an old one. It's an old British gouge, uh, yeah. but yeah. So same there's, and, that, and that's what I meant to show you guys too. I, I just did the wood block, so I don't know where all my wood carving tools are right now. Um, but here's a couple of them, like one of them, this is what I actually had and worked with when I was going through school. I had a whole set of these and these are actually for wood. Um, I can remember, I think my grandpa had these or something. I inherited these from somebody, I can't remember who. So some of them are really kind of old and janky looking. And then these are like more traditional kind of Japanese style tools. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different types of blades, different sizes, obviously. Like this is a teeny, teeny, tiny, where's my camera? It's not even focusing. Like even smaller than the V gouge that you guys have in your kit. Um, so. But you, but you can use wood. 
tools. You can use those, all of those tools on Lino cutting yeah. for Lino cutting. Yeah. So you can mm -hmm. interchangeably. Okay. Yeah. Even, I mean, I've used the speed ball. I wouldn't use it on what Trevor is working on, but I don't think I have it. So how do I hear this? I was working on this like much thinner. Um, and like I said, I can't find my wood cutting tools. So I was able to just use these. They'll just go duller quicker. Cause like this, this is just not as strong, like good as a metal and they just won't stay as sharp as, as long. Um, the other thing too, I don't know. I've never tried at least, um, if you can sharpen these, but like your nicer wooden tools, a lot of times it, it comes with a kit that comes with a sharpener, um, so that you can sharpen them as you go. Cause once it dulls out, like, like working on those, like Trevor's is that he's working on is really big, but if any of you guys saw the, the show on campus, I mean, three foot by five foot plywood, you're, you need to sharpen your blades a couple of times because it gets, just gets tougher and tougher to get through that material. So, but yeah, I, I started, I mean, this is a really basic set of wood cutting tools and it's, again, it's like a kit, like you would have all the different blades in here, but you just have individual handles, but I just can't find them right now. But that's what we had for when I was at school because we did wood and linoleum. So you can use it on both. I, I feel like I'm having a hard time cutting on this linoleum. I've had this linoleum piece for like for a month from when you, when I was doing, was about, was going to do the other workshop. And does mm -hmm. it dry out? Like you said, does it, does it change or is it always going to be? No, the same. I think that there's different, honestly, because like, mm, like some of my older pieces or there's also the gold linoleum. Oh, what happened to my phone again? Not now. Um, I don't know. Again, I don't know if it's too fair because I already carved it. This just feels like softer. So I don't know if it's just the different manufacturers that maybe it's a little, some of them are just a little bit better. Um, I don't think that they get, it would have to like be years and years and years, I think, for it to be like too brittle or something. Like thinking of like linoleum floor, because that's basically what this stuff is. Um, but again, if it's if it's is too difficult, try putting it, letting it sit in the sun before you um, carve. I would, yeah. I think it's the technique because I'm so the idea. If you could show again, it's like kind of firm pressure, like scooping, but at the same. Yeah, like if yeah. You go back to the, the smaller blades always easier because you're not move, removing as much material. Mm -hmm. Um, it's when you you don't need to go that deep, really. If you go too deep, that's going to make it much harder to um to carve. Um, so you just want that like kind of sweet spot. And again, I think it's just once you get going, you'll kind of start to feel it. Um that I don't know what angle is that like a 20 or 30 degree 15 I don't know <laughs> but it definitely like you don't want your blade to be like straight up and down by any means or even like at a 45 um you want it a little bit closer and you can kind of feel as you move um it gets harder and easier the more kind of straight up and down you get because you're basically cutting down deeper. And so you're trying to remove more material, right? Um, and that just made me think of something else too. The depth that you press or like the angle that you're holding also can kind of create like a wavy, of course that broke. Um, I'm not doing what I want. Like basically like the deeper I go, the wider it is. If I come up, it gets kind of skinnier. I don't know if you can see that very well. So the depth also can kind of um, create different marks as well as just changing the blades or the direction of the mark. But again, I think once you get going, Alan, like, you'll start to feel like at first I was like oh this is like this one Williams hard and now it's as I'm going it's like you get a better sense of where you need your blade to be 
And I don't feel I don't feel like I have much control of what I'm of my movement, and so I don't. I guess I have to get used to how short of strokes or whatever to do, or because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're all I can't like. I press and then it kind of flips up. I, I don't know. I just got to get yeah. practice. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, too, you're, it's, especially since you guys are starting out, it's almost inevitable you're going to slip. Like, mm -hmm. right? So that's just kind of part of it. Um, um, I still love, we were working with uh, Chris Lati, who's a, basically like a master printmaker. That's what he went to school for. He's done it for years. And he, like, I hate that <laughs> when I slip and I make a mark that I don't want, I get so mad at myself. Like it's really, <laughs> really hard for me, but for him, I love it. He just has a mentality like that is printmaking. Like it's just part of it. And even those marks, even if it's something you don't want, it's almost like it was meant to be there and it's still going to add to your final print. So um so hopefully that helps if you're <laughs> getting frustrated with like not feeling like you have the control of the blade yeah it's a different way of thinking because it's not like you're painting and you want it to be or it's not precise mm -hmm. and it's also permanent it's not like painting like if you paint something you can paint over it like once you True. make a mark, it's there. <laughs> you cannot add it back. You, you can't glue a piece back down. Uh -huh. It's gone. <laughs> um, so. You just kind of have to go with the flow, basically, or start over <laughs> if you really can't handle it, <laughs> which I have done. <laughs> Okay, so I'm working on another section. Oops. Sorry guys, I'm not talking much. I'm just trying to get some more carved so I can kind of Another thing too, once you guys really get going, um, usually if you were like had a whole setup and you had ink, you would pull like test prints. Um, let me try to find, where is it? So where's, here is one that I did. And I don't know if you can see, like, I wasn't as careful with, like, inking it. So there's kind of some spots. Too close, too close. Flip it around. But I'm just doing a test. Basically to be able to see what my marks are going to look like. And, like... I had this little weird cloud 
in the end, once I saw it printed, I didn't like it. So I just cut it away and then printed it again. If you guys don't have ink and if we're gonna print it for you, another way of doing this is to take, where'd my sketchbook go? A piece of paper. And it works best if you have like a chunk of like a graphite um, stick. Like this mechanical pencil will not work very well. And of course, that's like all I have right now. Well, I'm going to try my best with a mechanical pencil. But a regular pencil would be better um, so that you could, you basically don't want to do it up and down. You want to try to do it at an angle um, so that you get more surface hitting. But you can do, a, again, like a rubbing to if you don't have ink, but you want to kind of get a feel for what you're carving. Okay, let's see if this will work. So a pencil has like thicker, um, the thicker it is, the better, basically. And then you can take it and do the, the side of it and just lightly, of course, this is not going to come through very well. That might be too much. Where is it? Wow, that's really not working. It kind of came through. I've seen way better. I don't know why I haven't done a rubbing in forever. Well, that's not working. I don't know if it's my paper, but you can't. I've seen like from our workshops that we did, some students were able to pull some some rubbings. It could be my paper is too thick, so it's not getting pushed down. But you guys can try it and see if that will give you kind of an idea of what your marks are looking like. That was an epic fail. <laughs> um, where did my thing go? Oh, wow. How is it already 4.30? <laughs> Anybody have any other kind of last questions at all? No? Can you... Uh, um Tell us again if if we want to have them printed. What was what are our instructions from you? Um, I don't, Eva, are we going to send out an email? I think we said to everyone that was in here with when yeah. we okay. can send an email. Um, I think we were since campus isn't fully open yet. I think we're kind of seeing when people will be on campus to be able to drop off and whatnot. I, I mean, I'll check with Leslie. Um, we've been doing drop-offs with no problem. Like I said, we did two other workshops this semester, as long as you guys just stay in your car and I'll have to come out and get the blocks from you guys. Um, I also don't mind if like the day we pick, if you guys can't drop off, I can, you guys can drop it off at, if it's not far for you guys at my my house. I did that with some of the, the faculty and staff that, did our last workshop, um, like you need to do on a weekend or something, just let me know. Um, but yeah, so I can check with uh, Leslie and just make sure I do. I'm going to be back in our office, which is where our press uh, to be able to print is. Um, anyways, because I have to finish something else up. So I can set those dates and send them 
we can send an email out as to when to drop that off. Um, I can print, I think we have some paper that we can use. Um, but like, if you guys had something specific, um, like even we can do it on a t-shirt, if you guys have a t-shirt, like a plain t-shirt that you'd want to be printing these on, um, if you want to bring that in with your block, um, we can print on t-shirts. That's what we did with our second workshop that we just ended. Uh, I just printed a ton of t-shirts last week, two weeks ago, last week. <laughs> um, or if you have a certain like special paper that you've been saving for something and you want to try printing on it, like you can bring that in too. But other than that, we just will have some plain white uh, paper. Jenny, I have a question before we wrap up. Mm -hmm. So I just finished <laughs> my sketch on here. So mm -hmm. how do we know which which one we are carving out and what we're leaving? So you want to carve away what you want to be white. Okay. So kind of one of. Um... Sorry, I know you've gone over this so many times. Oh, you're totally fine. <laughs> you're totally fine. Here, I'll do this one smaller. So, geez. so looking here, mm -hmm. everything that you see that's white on mm -hmm. here, so like the face, the white parts of the fence, that's all what I carved away. Because when you carve it, then basically what we do is we take the roller and we'd roll ink. So it's only going to hit, the ink is only going to hit the high points. Okay. So therefore, whatever you don't carve, that's what will be inked up and print onto whatever you're printing on. Okay, got it. Um, the other thing, when we can send that email for drop-off stuff. Um, I can include the PowerPoint maybe or a link to it or something. Um, and that image that I had in one of the slides. I'm going to switch back to the share screen real quick. Um, it's blurry because I totally took this from just Google search. <laughs> but so we're doing the relief print here. So this kind of shows semi, besides the fact that it's blurry, the light in the dark is basically like it, that's your V gouge that you carved away. So that's white. And then say we were using orange ink. So they rolled the orange ink out and it hit all the high points that you didn't carve. So that's what's gonna print. Does that help? Does that visual help? Yes. So, so just how much pressure do we put on here? Huh? How much pressure do we put on this um, board? On the blade? Yeah, on the blade. You don't have to go very deep. Um, okay. So you can, the, the light, the less pressure you have, the kind of finer details you can get. Um, let me stop share screen again. So like here in this, in the grassy area, I did the smallest blade and I did very little pressure, just enough to kind of make that, that shallow mark. But then in the more solid areas, I went deeper and like more pressure so I could get deeper to make sure that I wanted that to be solid white. And then like in the sky, it's kind of like a mixture. Like I didn't put a lot of pressure, but I maybe carved a, like over and over in the same area. And that kind of gave me that like um, residual. Where did it go? I'm going the opposite way. Like in the clouds up here. Okay. Okay. And how do you keep from your blade from slipping? Did you have like a tip for that or is it just inevitable? From slipping? Yeah. Um, it, it sometimes it's inevitable. If you go try to go slow, don't like rush through it. Um, honestly too, the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get with it. But even if you're get comfortable with it, it it's, it's bound, almost bound to happen. Not to say that you can't, you know, get away with not getting, having slippage, but 
sometimes it happens and it just doesn't matter because it's like in a bigger area, but because okay. yeah, it, it's going to happen basically. <laughs> I feel like okay. I never go through a block without having some type. Usually it's not in an area. Hopefully that's that important that you can really see it. Um, but even if it is just keep going with what you have and try not to get too frustrated by it. <laughs> if that makes sense at all. Anything else? So one more time, Jenny, we are taking away the parts that we want to stay white. Yes, yes. Okay. Basically the opposite of drawing, right? Yeah. When you draw, the mark you make is where your ink or your pencil is gonna be. But for this, you're taking away. So your mark that you're making is gonna be your white and then you'll, lay the ink down on the high points. Okay. And again, too, I, like, we didn't watch them because each one was probably like 15, 20 minutes, but I also included some uh, YouTube videos and you can just search YouTube and there's a ton of artists on there that kind of just speed, you know, you can just watch. I almost, I got like totally sucked into it and started watching a ton of them because some of them are like kind of meditative because they show themselves like, you know, faster, but carving away their entire block. And I find that super satisfying. Um, so I, I linked a couple in the PowerPoint that you guys can watch. Um, and hopefully that will also give you a better idea. Um, another way of doing it like Trevor did, right? So even on linoleum, you guys either can use like a fat Sharpie if that's easier for you guys to understand. Um, or like, what else could you do? I don't know if you guys would have any type of like ink like india ink would be a way of just basically making your block dark and then you can see where you're carving away that if that if your brain works like that if that makes sense that's another way of doing it um because it's easier to see cool so how long does it usually take you when you're doing like a four by six size thing to carve away? Sorry, say that again. I, the beginning oh, of it didn't come. How about how long will you usually will you usually spend doing like the carving portion? It depends on how detailed. <laughs> Honestly, if you're using that bigger gouge, you you can get through it pretty quickly. Um, it's been so long now, but I probably spent a couple hours it's always weird i don't ever time it really i'm trying to think and also i split it up that's another huge thing you guys i mean you guys haven't done it a lot but if you if you're doing detailed work take breaks because that repetitive motion can mess up your wrists <laughs> like it'll you'll start to get like kind of sore even your fingers and stuff so i think even with these smaller pieces it's good to kind of work on it and then step away from it. It's also good just to walk away from what you're working on and come back with like a new, fresh, fresh look, right? Um, so I hardly ever sit down and like finish a block, even these smaller pieces in like one sitting. Can you just show us how you, you're holding the blade? Just make sure I'm holding it right. Mm -hmm. There's different ways of doing this too. Um, I usually I'm trying to think now, how do I do it? I kind of almost hold it like a pencil um, with how small this is. Um, if you have something to, to press it against, it's really good to try to like, this is actually made to kind of fit in your palm. And you can, if that's comfortable, kind of wrap your hand oh, okay. around it like that. Um, I've just always <laughs> held it like a pencil and put a lot of pressure, like holding it like right at the base of it. Um, but honestly, I think even that too, I kind of move my hand just depending on what I'm doing and like how small of a mark or something I make. But I think this is meant to be placed in your palm. That's why it's kind of rounded and held like that. And then even better, cause then it keeps your hand out of the way 
which again, don't do it. <laughs> it's not fun. Um, keep that hand behind whatever you can do. Um, is that you can hold it, but again, you kind of need something to push, push it up against, which they do make things that you can, that will hold your block in place that you could then hold with both hands, but it's kind of whatever's comfortable, comfortable for you, basically. Love it. Thank you. And again, remember too, you don't have to keep your block and carve it all in this direction. You can move it around, right? as you're going like this is kind of circular so i want all my cuts going inward so i'm going to work on it and just turn it as i go 